Guys, it's May May, and it's time for our scripture art journaling for week 35. Can you believe we're on week 35? It seems like it's gone so fast. But this week's scripture comes from Psalm 1-6, and it says, The Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And I know this tree makes no sense, but I want to do a pathway on my page going like this because it reminds me of the way of something, having a pathway. I'm going to show you some things I'm going to try to do um, to make this happen. And you probably know that I'm that person that says use what you got, so that's what we're going to try to do. Now this tree, here's what I did. I took a piece of paper and I just rough cut out a bunch of limbs. I mean, I just took my scissors and played and this is what I came up with and it's going to be fine. I know it's not perfect, but if you would like to have something that's a little more perfect, you can always go to your Cricut machine or your die cutting machine or anything and cut out a tree. But this one's going to live in this part of our, I sound like Bob Ross, this happy tree is going to live in this corner of our page. Now, I want to make a pathway that runs across the page. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a pencil and put in my tree where I want it. I'm just going to kind of um, start my pathway something like this and just kind of give myself a guideline. And then I'm going to come back and do it something like this, kind of going off into the distance. And see how I want it to come across this tree? I'm going to bring this out like this. Now this is just to give me a guideline because I'm fixing to try something and I don't know if this is going to work or not. I did test it one time and it kind of worked. Here's what I did. This is one of my stamps. It's actually from one of my stamp sets called Berry Sentimental. On the other side, it says Get Bared or Soon, but I'm going to be using the back side of it because it's kind of the shape of a rock. I don't know. I'm really pushing it. And I have this ink from, Lond um, from Memento called London Fog. It's kind of a gray color. And here's what my plan is. Let me show you. I better get my scrap pad out because if I don't, I'm going to have a mess. If you don't know, what I'd like to do is have these cheap little 15 cent notebooks that you pick up this time of year when school starts back cheap. And I use them for scrap pads. All right, so I put that underneath and I'm going to ink up my rock. <laughs> and I'm just going to start in my guideline there, which I can erase, by the way. So see how I get the look and the feel of kind of a stone? And I'm even going to leave a gap between them to kind of look like it's cobblestone even. And I'm just going to twist and turn this. And like I said, it's the back of the stamp. So I'm just kind of making it work. You're going to get the feel of what we're looking for. It's probably not going to be exactly like a cobblestone walkway, but I think we'll get the feel of it. I'm just going to go through here and it's kind of neat. It's kind of fun to do it because you kind of have to fit the little stamp into places and kind of twist it and turn it and see where it fits best. Probably will have some pretty big gaps in some places and smaller gaps in others. So just going up to that line at the top like so. And I may even come back and mask off some. See how they look if they overlap. Mm, that's fine with me if they overlap. That doesn't look bad. So that. Let me turn the page a little bit. Get this stamp up in this area. Now you just have to go through your little stamp collection and see what you got that you can make turn into a rock. You may have rocks. I don't know. Somebody might have made a stamp set that has rocks. That would be cool if they did. And if they do, I'd use that. That's kind of the feel of a path. Let's see what I can do about this right here. I'm going to do some selective inking. I think I'm just going to ink up about half of the stamp and then just lay it on that edge. See, that'll work. Just do selective inking instead of having to um, mask it off. Here's how you do it. I'm going to clean the stamp. Then I'm going to stamp, I'm going to ink about half of it and then just lay it on that path and get into those little spots. Same thing here. I'm going to ink a little less than half on this one. So see, that works. Now what I'm going to do is take the same stamp. I'm going to clean it off real quick. And then I'm going to put, I just have a baby wipe that I'm wiping that on on the side of the screen here. Then I'm going to put it into this really pale um, Ranger Distress Ink. This is Antique Linen. And I'm going to go back. I need to fix that, but I think this might do it. I'm going to go back. And this is almost like second generation, but we're using a different color. And I'm going to stamp again with this other color in between them 
to kind of give it a feel of maybe grout or just another color in there for more um, for more texture. That's super cool. That's doing the work for me. <laughs> I like when things do the work for me. I also like being able to take my stamps and turn them into more than just one thing. I don't like to get one use out of anything. I'm really bad about that. I want to be able to use something for 15 different uses. <laughs> and see how it's kind of giving it like a grout feel or a multi multicolored stone feel? It's kind of giving the stones another dimension of color. Colored. Let me do this down here. This feels a little too bright. Just in this area. Okay. So I like that. I think that feels like a path. And with our scripture, it works with our scripture talking about a path because it says the Lord knows the way of the righteous. And I think that is cool to have the way that we walk. So there's that. And then I'm going to put my tree back. So that'll kind of overlap the path. Now this is not going to be perfect artistry. This is very much just to make you feel like, oh, it's a tree and a path. I'm not good at this stuff. So we're just playing. So here's the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to take my um, glue and I'm going to glue my tree down real quick. Because the um, next little thing I actually tested at another time in my life. It's not something I just did now. But I'm using a pen. I'm going to use a pencil eraser to get the feel of leaves. Because if you don't know, you can stamp with pencil erasers or um, the rubber material that makes p um, pencil erasers. You can use that to stamp with. So let me glue this tree down and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to get this up in the corner just like that and then pat my branches down. And I really want my um, branches all glued down real well because of this next technique we're going to do. I'm calling it a technique loosely, okay? Because <laughs> it's really just playing. I put my pen back in my glue. Never forget to do that because you will be cleaning out that little tip if you don't. All right, now multiple inks. We're going to use Peanut Brittle from Memento. Oops, I'm going to drop that one first. We're going to use Antique Linen from Distress Ink. I'm going to use Vintage Photo Distress Ink, and I'm also going to use this um, wagon color from Brutus Monroe because I think it'll be perfect for what we're doing. Okay, pencil eraser. This is just the tip. You can see where I did a little practice earlier. It's just the tip of any old pencil eraser, and I'm going to dip into any of these colors to start with. I think I'll start with the lightest color first, only because moving from um, light to dark won't really contaminate your ink pads. So I'm going to start here and I'm just going to go around this tree and put a bunch of dots. I want you to think pointillism. If you, if you remember about pointillism and how you just use dots to, uh, in, you know, in mass quantity to make shapes and shadows, that's kind of what you're thinking here. We're going to make this tree very full of leaves without leaves. Now if you had a leaf stamp, which if, if you have my stamps they call um, a bushel and a peck, there are leaves in there. But because it's temporarily out of stock, I thought I'd try something else for you guys to let you see another way to do it. But if you already have that stamp set, go check that out because you can do that too. Alright, and I'm going to do a lot of this light color because I really want my tree to be very full. And I've been feeling fall lately, y'all, and I know we're nowhere, nowhere near there in Alabama, but it's been cool, so it's made me think fall. Alright, so there is the light color. So I'm going to go ahead and put the lid back on that one because I don't want it to sit there open forever. Now I'm going to go to the second darkest color, which is going to be this Distress Ink color, and I'm just going to do the same thing. See how it's starting to fill up and look tree leafy? It also reminds me of like if you had a job where you had to stamp a million things that said a word and you were, you know, stamp off, stamp on, stamp off, stamp on. <laughs> so it's kind of fun too. Kind of like when I go to the post office and they have to stamp everything and they're like stamp, stamp, stamp. It's cute. Okay, so I'm going to keep going with the brown. And I'm even doing some on the tree, which you might not can see, but the dark color 
will help to kind of make that tree blend in a little bit just to have some of the texture on it. Cool, right? Okay, now I'm going to close this dude up and I'm going to go to the next color, which might be a little bit lighter now that I think about it, this um, peanut brittle, but yeah, it is, but that's all right. Just fill it in. Do you sometimes look at the scriptures and and feel something like like I'm saying I feel a path because the way of the righteous and the Lord knows the way of the righteous and um, he also knows you know the path of destruction that the wicked are on but it's it's so interesting to me because I just as soon as I read it I thought I pictured a path in my mind and the way we're walking every day and the way we're going so you ever do that just kind of see things a little differently than what's actually there like you don't find the word path in that scripture at all but for some reason I see it all right, so I'm through with I'm a through with that one. <laughs> now we're going to go to wagon, and I'm just going to dip my eraser and watch. This color is going to make this all pop. This red is going to make this tree mean something. It's going to be like, oh, that's it. The reds and the oranges and the browns. That's what it's going to do. I love it. And I'm going to really put a lot of red. I like the red. I think it really pops. And it really makes it where it's more of a changing of the seasons than the actual winter scene, you know. Because in the change of the seasons, you get a lot of the oranges and the reds and the pretty colors like that. So I'm going to go a little crazy with the red. I also don't care if I'm getting full stamps. You notice I'm not even trying to get full circles. That's not the point. The point is to get color. Now with the red, at this point, I've got plenty of bright red. Let me do some on the tree before we move on to the next one. Just because I said I wanted some of those dots in there just for texture. Alright, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink, stamp, and then stamp again. Because I'm doing that kind of stamping off thing. So ink, stamp, stamp again. And with this ink, I think I can do that a couple times and still get a good bit of color. So I'm going to go through and stamp it until almost all the color comes off. Because I want my tree to feel so full. Let's do it again. All right, now I think I want to go back to the orange color and bring some of that in. So this peanut brittle color, I'm going to bring some of that back in. It's almost like painting with your eraser. Okay, now I'm going to go back with the brown. And you're just going to keep doing this until you're totally happy with how it looks. And I want lots of color. So I'm going to go back with this dark brown and kind of do that same stamp, stamp off thing. Looking good? All right, I want to do one more or one more pass on the light color again. So I'm going to wipe my eraser off on my baby wipe. Not that it's going to matter too much, but just a little bit. And I'm going to go back with this light color just, just to make it so full. I'm going to stop there. I feel good about it. I like the tree looking like that. I like the path looking like that. Now then, I want to kind of look at it for a minute and see what I want to do next. I think I'm going to try something. I think I'm going to go back to my rock stamp, which is not a rock stamp, but it's what it is. And I'm going to come along the edge of this path with a different rock. Oh, wait, I just thought of something. Let me try this. Hold on. So I'm going to take my rock stamp again and the vintage photo, and I'm going to ink this um, stamp half on and half off, like they're calling selective stamping, okay? And then I'm going to go to the edge of the path and just stamp this darker rock all the way down in a half shape, like it's a border for the path. Now, if your rocks are starting to look too similar, like I think mine are, just clean it off and then ink the other half of the stamp and just come right back at it. And I'm trying to move it around some as I go too. I think that's kind of cool. Now I'm going to do the top of it. So there's a little border path. I'm going to come in here and get rid of some of the ink off of this. Kind of knock the color back too. I kind of like that. 
I kind of like adding that darker color again. I think I'm going to let there be some fallen leaves on the path. So let's do some dotting on the path. Just in some areas. And maybe some here like they've fallen and kind of gathered. I'm going to stop because I'm getting carried away. All right, I just wanted the feel of a path in a tree, and I know there's no background done or anything, but this is just kind of what I wanted was this feel of a path in a tree. Now I want to write the verse on the page as well. I've got this brown big marker, and I'm going to start up here and then split my verse in these two spots. So the first part is going to be the Lord knows the way of the righteous up here. So I'm going to start here. The Lord knows the way of the righteous and then but the way of the wicked so I'm going to start here but the way of the wicked will perish. And that is Psalm 1, 6. And that's from the ESV. And I always like to write the translation when I have it. I really like how that turned out. It's really what I wanted it to do. I wanted that rocky path for the way. I wanted the tree and the leaves. I think that's perfect for what I'm looking for. So I'm just going to glue this into my journal and we are ready for our next our next week to pop up on us before we know it. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me. If this is your first time to see our scripture art journaling, please head over to our Facebook group, which is called Hide His Word in My Heart. Join the group and you'll be able to see a list of all the scriptures from the first one through today. And you can catch up and be right there with us. So there you go, guys. This is week 34. No, 35. I may have said that week wrong. It may be 35 now that I think about it. All right, guys. Thanks so much. I'll see you next week. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.